All right, guys, gals, and whatever. I'm back. Been off for a couple weeks. Been busy doing other stuff, but I'm back out here fighting with the Buick. And today, the goal is to get rid of these seal beams and get these installed. So, this is something I rigged up. I took some stock Buick, uh, you know, uh, what do you call them? Uh, reflectors. And I modified them slightly. I made an adapter ring so that I could put modern LED 12 volt bulbs in them. Um, so this will give me a heck of a lot more lumens than I had with the six volts. And those guys there, I have them rigged up, even though my car runs on six volts. I have two transformers that convert six volt to 12 volt. Each one has an output of 10 amps. Now, because those seal beams draw 10 amps about each uh, on low beam, high beam, forget it, they can't do it. I have to have two transformers, one for each headlight, which is good for redundancy, right? If one fails, you can still see. Um, but it's not very efficient, it's not very elegant, and they're seal beams. It doesn't look right on the car. So I'm trying to get these to work. Uh, and my hope is because LED, one, more light, awesome, two, less current draw so hopefully i can get both to run on one which means then if i decide to keep both transformers i can use one for high beam one for low beam or I, i'm not sure what i'm gonna do my goal is to get low beam on one transfer transformer and so it'll look right and before people start ripping me for that's not silver plated what are you doing okay i have like five or six sets of these the original ones that were in the car are put away they need to be resilvered but I'm not doing that right now. So I took the worst pair I had and I just hit them with some silver paint uh, for this project. If they work, great. I'll send the other ones out to be re-silvered or replated, I guess would be the way to say it. And then I'll retrofit this setup into it and we'll be fine. So the way this works, and it's hard to see, but I just machined a little horseshoe clip that sits around the outside of this and essentially retains this H1 bulb which is the closest kind of shape to the hole that's on these. And then I just drilled and tapped a couple of holes in the retainer so that I use the stock holes in the shield. So I don't modify the shield at all. So it's easily reversible, it does no damage. Um, so I can rip them out anytime I want. So hopefully I can get these guys sitting back in here today. I gotta make sure I got all the pieces, which is a concern. So I'll pop this off and see what's in there and then see if I can get this sitting in there and wired up and see how bright it is, is it worth it, how many amps is it drawing, and kind of go from there. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so here's all the pieces for what I got. Yeah, I know my bench is a mess. Ugh, too many projects going at once. So here's the light. Um, I got it off Amazon. It's a cheapy H1. I wasn't going to buy anything fancy because I didn't know if this was going to work. So, you know, they have a little fan in them. I don't know if they're going to overheat in the housing. Only time will tell. But this is proof of concept. If it works, then I'll go out and get some quality H1 LED bulbs. I think this set was 35 bucks for the two. Okay, so what I did was I machined up this little horseshoe collar. Um, I can make a drawing of it if anybody wants it. But it's uh, I think it's quarter inch. Uh, I forget the OD ID. Uh, very simple. Just turned it in a lathe, bored a hole, and then put it in a bridge port and machined up this groove. You don't need a lathe and a bridge port to do this. You could do it with a couple washers and a Dremel if you wanted to. Then I drilled and tapped a couple of uh, number 440 holes. And the beauty of these is they fit right in here. Well, not with the screws in. But anyway, you get the idea. The screws go through those holes, and it retains it. So... What I gotta do is, and I picked these up off uh, eBay. I didn't have the originals. These are new old stock originals. Um, I think I paid a hundred bucks for the set. And I tell you, they look like they've never been installed. So good score there. So I gotta pull these little screws. And uh, let's see. And these indexing pins help align it in here. They kind of center it. And let's see. Now I gotta line the holes up. I think I have that pointing down. Oh, let's see here. 
this is probably pretty boring just watching an old guy just putting a light bulb oh yeah another thing too i had to modify the the mount for the h1 i just ground these edges off so that these two screws would clear the h1 bulb you could actually drill those holes for a more positive index and if i do replace these with a more ex more expensive bulb i probably will so let's see here where are the holes which are gonna mind up use my fat to hold it in place ah, need a screwdriver need a screwdriver silly boy I don't know if it's magnetic oh, it is good I'll help with my fat fingers get in there you little bugger where are they One started. Oh yeah, use a magnetic screwdriver, you knucklehead. Ah, not that magnetic. Oh, it's gone forever. Nope, it's not. It's right here. I tell you, sometimes when you drop things, you swear there's like a black hole under your bench and it gets sucked into another dimension and somewhere there's a Klingon sitting there doing his laundry or something and a screw pops out next to him and he's trying to figure out what the heck is going on. At least that's what it feels like. No? Is it just me? It's probably just me. All right. Do Klingons do laundry? I wonder how that works, right? I mean, they're all warriors. Who makes lunch? No inappropriate women's jokes, please. All right. So, that's in there. Pretty solid. It's not going to move. I don't want to tighten it up too much. It is just plastic. So, I mean, it's not like we're trying to hold back 100 pounds here at 50 Gs. So, now, all of this needs to go over there. All right. So, I've got one side in. The other side is still the old seal beam, both running at 12 volts. Let's turn on the lights and see what it looks like. Is there a difference? I think there is. The camera's probably blinded now, but definitely a difference as far as light. It's gonna be a lot better to drive at night. In fact, I'll probably get high beams from people. And I can't tell really if there's a big amp drawer difference yet or not. So, we must be on the right track. So let's see if we can get this one out. Where is my screwdriver? driver? All right, so now who knows what we're gonna find in here. These haven't been open, geez, probably since the 70s. Would be my guess, this car sat for a long, long, long time. All right, well, it didn't fall out. So we got the old retainer ring. <laughs> She's a little rough, but we'll make it work. And this is obviously a jury rig. It looks like a headlight holder out of a, I guess, like a 50s car. Which would front screwdriver. Which would not surprise me. Get these screws out. Let's see what we got. Look at my back, that's probably pretty interesting. I'm new to this, I don't know what I'm doing. I watch YouTube videos, I don't make them. Well, I guess I do make them, don't I? I don't make them very well, let's put it that way. I'm not a an AVE or a Hoobie's Garage or a, definitely not a Jay Leno. Although I can understand why he has so many cars. It's an addiction. I like beautiful women, I want everyone I see, you know? Probably shouldn't say that. Oh, let's see. Oh, wow, a wood screw. Nice touch. Whoa! There we go. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how that works. No 
Okay. So let's take a look at this. This is a hot mess. Wow, Bondo. That must have been the ground. All right. <laughs> so here's what was holding it in. That is definitely out of a later car, obviously. My guess is 50s or 60s. And of course, the classic federally mandated seal beam headlight that was around, well, forever. Westinghouse. Huh. All right, here's what he was using for a socket. It fell apart. So let's take a look at that. And then in here, oh, let's see a Bondo. These must have been rotted out. I mean, so the story behind this car, as I posted before, but my grandfather bought it in the 60s. Uh, he got it from, uh, it was in a barn, like every old car, right? And it was all rotted out because the block was cracked. They had pulled it off the road. It wasn't rotted out. I take that back. The car's in good shape, but the, the block was cracked. The interior was a mess. And the story I was told is when they were towing it home when my father was a boy, uh, the doors fell off because the structure is wood. And the doors actually fell off going down the road. That's how rotten they were. So my grandfather just puttered around on it, redid the structure of the doors, and kind of jury rigged enough to get it to where you could drive it. Um, he was not a car show guy. He didn't believe in million dollar restorations. He, you know, um, he would save two dollars to break a tire down himself. Uh, you know, that's just the, the depression mentality. Um, so he always did just what was needed to make it run and drive. Um, and I kind of respect that, you know. Um, so there's a lot of depression mindset repairs in this thing, like being a ball of Bondo. That's new. I didn't even know that was there. So that's something that I'll have to deal with when I do the body work. Um, so it's almost like a little treasure trove of, you know, that way of thinking. One or two, I'm not sure where it goes. Um, so uh, every time I open something up, there's a little surprise. So what I'll do is I'll get this electrical sorted out because nobody wants to watch that. And then I'll give you guys an update and see what we got. All right, so what I got here is I got it wired up just temporary, just to see if it's going to light up to the low beam and the ground. They ignore the Bondo. <laughs> yeah, I got to figure that out. But it is working. It's brighter than the sun. And these do have little fans in them with a heat sink to cool the bulb. And I'm not sure how that's going to react being in this enclosed environment. I would think on a hot summer's evening... Yeah, that Bondo's terrible. On a hot summer's evening... Um, I don't know if they're going to overheat or not. I guess the only way to find out is to do it and drive it and see where we're at. I've got this side right here. Now, I'm still running on two um, transformers. Of course, there's no heat. I wouldn't expect there would be. If there is, I'd be worried. Um, so let's see what we're drawing on the amp gauge, which, I mean, it's not super precise. Let's see what it's asking for. So what is that? seven amps or so it was 21 with the car not running it was drawing 20 21 amps so i've dropped it shoot half right now i'm wondering if these two guys will run on one transformer hopefully i can get it down even more which will make it easier on my generator which is phone stock six volt um and I'll feel a little better about driving at night. Plus, I'll actually be able to see where I'm going. So let me get this set up, installed, and then we'll start futzing with the transformers. All right, headlights. Let's see if they work. They better work. Hey, look at that, probably blinding the camera, but two LED headlights. And they draw about 7 amps compared to the 21. Well, the whole lighting, all the lights on the car draw about 7 amps. So compared to what I had before, 21 amps, it's a lot better. Now when I'm driving in traffic and stuff, I should be able to stay above zero when the car is, you know, idling at a stoplight or not go very far. It used to go down to like 10 amps, 12 amp discharge. And I don't really like that. Um, so these will be brighter and they'll draw less. The downside, they're white. I hate the white. I wish they were yellow because it doesn't look right on this car and I'm gonna look around for some H1 LEDs that are in fact yellow. They're out there, I'll find them. Um, 
so this is an easy project for anyone to do. Um, I will have to find a link for the transformer. If you go on Amazon and search 6 to 12 volt converter, you'll find it. There's only one. They're inexpensive. They're like $35. I don't know how light duty they are, but one of them now can run two LED headlights. I've got the other one still in there. Uh, it's not wired up, but it's sitting there. It could easily be switched over in a matter of a minute. So as I drive this at night, if I have a problem and it fails, I can just switch to another one until I know I can trust it. I don't want to be caught from home with no headlights at night. So I hope you guys found this somewhat interesting um, and maybe even helpful. It'll work on any car, any six volt car. So it's just a matter of uh, figuring out how to mount the bulbs in your housings. Uh, if you do find it interesting, please comment, like, share, subscribe. Yeah, I know. I say it in every video. Everybody says it, but it's true. Comments are really helpful for me because then I know what, one, what you guys want to see. Two, what I'm doing wrong in these videos, which is a lot. I'm not a videographer. I'm an engineer. Um, and three, it's just fun to talk to other car guys. So please let me know what you think. Um, and I got some other ideas for projects, for video projects coming up. I got to figure out which one I'm going to do next. Uh, the, the, the carpet is still a high priority. I want to get that done. Um, but I may not be able to get to it for a couple weeks because work and schedule is just kind of busy right now. So um, thanks for your time. If you made it this far, thanks, you know, two thumbs up to you. And I will see you guys in another video.